Did he introduce you? I like the shirt. Yeah, you gotta look professional. That's true. All right, so welcome to First Level Training, the Firearms Education Center. This is our first of a series of podcasts that we'll be doing. Uh, I'd like to introduce Jose Lugo. He is my marketing project manager and partner in crime here uh, at the store. Um, just before we get started, I know a lot of people have questions about red flag laws. It's really not the content of this particular podcast, but I wanted to make some analogies to red flag laws and what they mean for gun owners. Um, a car is a 2,000 pound projectile. <clears throat> And there's no red flag laws against drivers of these weapons, okay? And no one to take their cars away if they're potentially mentally unfit or dangerous to drive. You can get a ticket for unsafe driving uh, and not get your car taken away. You get your license taken away, but not your car. You can have your license revoked or suspended for such things as no insurance or no registration and not have your car taken away. Yep. You can even get a DWI and not have your car taken away. But someone with no experience or education in mental health and without any firearms knowledge or experience can take your firearms away because they have a personal issue with you, okay? And without due process. It's all can happen without you not even knowing about it. Yeah, that's the, for me, that's the scary part. It is. Is, is knowing that, you know, somebody says, you know, I have something off about that guy. Your neighbor next door, if they don't like the way you act. Right. And they know you're an NRA member, a firearms instructor, somebody that goes hunting. They know you have guns. To get back at you, they, can, they can start a case. It's a massive... I and without like, you knowing. See, yeah, exactly. See, I feel like it's a massive loophole. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to be upset with me because I came home too loudly in the middle of the night one night or something like that mm -hmm. and you've had it up to here and you want to be vindictive you know I, I think that what their goal is is commendable I think that they kind of have an idea of what they of, of, of I guess they have they an idea of police, what they're trying they want to police the situation and be responsible right but sometimes our emotions get in the way exactly you know? a lot of the times a, a lot, lot of the times, times. Yeah. and people on a whole, are not healthcare, mental health care professionals, and really don't have the credentials to deem someone unfit. Exactly. And, you know, and, and the other thing, too, is that you know, while mental health is uh, something that's important, you know, I think for, for everyone in general, uh, I think it's important to point out that the vast majority of these... Uh, gun cases or shooting cases or what have you, there's not a lot of real s statistical evidence saying that mental health is what is causing people to do these things. Mm -hmm. I think it's bigger than that. I think it's cultural, you know. Social media has a lot to do sure. with it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, when we were growing up as kids, you had friends. You went out, you played. You socialized. A lot of people, this is their social life right here. I think that's dangerous because you don't get interaction with people. You don't get to hurt their feelings and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. You know what I mean? Now you I don't... can hurt your feelings and hide behind my keyboard. Exactly. Right. And not know the repercussions. You can tell by the look on somebody's face if you told them something that's either offensive to them or that hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. And you can take it back or make them feel like, you know what, I was an idiot. I said something really stupid and I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. You can't do that with a device. And what's, what's something that you got to pay attention to, too, I think, too, when it comes to, uh, like, social media, right, is uh, as we surf the web, as we go on Facebook, Instagram, you know, as we're exhibiting our behaviors and looking up different topics, these uh, search engines, right, they're, they're learning about our browsing behaviors. They're le learning about things that interest us. And so they're going to try to serve up content so that interests us. Good now, or bad. Good or bad, correct. So let's say I'm a chef and I spend a lot of time looking up, you know, researching recipes or looking up, uh, you know, foods of the world or Different an elusive... cooking devices. Right, whatever the case may be. Over time, 
you know, Google, Facebook, you know, they all of them. Slam you with that. Yeah, they're going to say, well, this is what this guy's interested in, so let's keep feeding you, right? But what happens when you go down a rabbit hole and all of a sudden you start calling somebody, you know, you, you agree with a post on it, someone calls you out on it, right? Then what do you end up doing, right? You end up trying to defend your position. Then you start looking for things to help you posit, defend your position. Mm -hmm. And all of the data that's coming back to you to help you defend your position is still going to be biased towards what you were initially looking for. Looking, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very double-edged sword, and I think that pays a part of it, um, is, is that social media, um, and then media in general, too. I think we forget, you know. Mm -hmm. you know very one-sided. Yeah, you know, they talk yeah. about video games, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Playing video games for since they come out, you know, had a clean right. vision when it first. And I tell you um, what, and, and I'm not defending the media, but it's their job to almost demonize things to make it come out yeah. as news yeah. that people are interested in. And I think a gripe or a dislike for is no reason for another person to have the power to take someone's Second Amendment rights away, especially without due process. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of Battle is going to go on now because uh, I believe New Jersey is going to enact this uh, red flag law September 1st. Um, and, and people are going to act on it. And, and rightfully so. I mean, if there's been a time where you had a neighbor for the longest time where you wanted to do something about this guy because he walks around in circles at night talking to himself and, and you know he has firearms and it scares you. Um, that now you have the ability to do something. But you are not the mental health professional. You can't say that this guy has a thing in his ear and he's just talking to his mother on the phone. Right. Every right. night at 6.30, he's talking to his mom. And right. whether you can see that thing in his ear and whether he's talking to somebody or not, or you think he's just talking to himself, is not for you to determine. So letting the layperson basically handing them a set of tools that can uh, lock anybody up or lock up their tools, their firearms, or anything like that, is very dangerous. Like you said, it's a slippery slope. It really is. Man. And, and people really need to be careful about how much rope they give to yeah. someone that is not necessarily qualified to do so. And the other thing, too, is, is, is what you're doing is... You're circumventing, I think, certain protections that we have individually, you know, as citizens, right? Uh, so that's that's scary in and of itself, you know. And, and just the fact that the Second Amendment rights is a constitutional right, and now you're putting a law on that that says, well, it's really not. You don't have the right to bear arms. Right. It's if your neighbor says you don't want, you can't have it. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, you know, there's there's organizations. Um, Anything like like holdmyguns.org that I was telling you about, mm -hmm. where their big thing is that they, they work with the community so that if you have a, a firearm and you're going through some sort of crisis, right? Whether it's an emotional crisis or whatever the case may be, you're going through say a crisis. Say a family member dies and you're on antidepressants and you want to keep your firearm right. safe and out of your hands, much less anybody else's. Right. You can reach out to them and they can point you in the direction of, let's say, like a firearms dealer that will secure your your firearm uh, until such time that your medication uh, expires you're okay. or you're okay and your crisis is passed crisis, you work through it right this does not allow that no and that's that a great idea and who's who's doing uh, that? I think they're called holdmyguns.org what a great idea yeah it I just really is. heard about them a few days ago but, yeah, so uh, shout out to you guys excellent yeah, excellent stuff. idea I'm behind that 100% mm -hmm. um, and there are other ways that you can um, keep yourself safe. Now, if you are going through a rough time, and I'm sure everyone's thought about it, everyone says, oh, I never thought about suicide or hurting myself or just or hurting moving out else. of the country or, yeah, we're hurting somebody else. Get a grip. This is, this is real. People go through these feelings every day. Mm -hmm. And to have an uh, avenue to keep yourself from harming not just yourself, but others, anything, is a great way to um, protect. 
And we're all protectors. We protect our families. We protect our jobs. We protect uh, our belongings, our households. Um, so this is just another way to be a protector. Um, and the protector program is something that we're developing here at First Level Training and soon to be come a, a series. Um, but getting back to that uh, red flag laws thing, I don't want to make this about red flag laws. What I really would like to make it about is, is gun education um, and gun control. Now, gun control, because of its terminology, let me give you the terminology of gun control. Gun control or firearms legislation is by definition a set of laws that regulate the manufacture, the sale, transfer, possession, modification, or use of a firearm by civilians, okay? But where does it say education? How can you have gun control without education? How can you have control of anything without education? See, that's one of my, so I mean to cut you it's off, okay. but that's one of my big pet peeves. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I learned to drive, you know, my dad told me, uh, I'm driving a weapon. Exactly. You know, I was like, what do you mean a weapon? Freaking car, right? He was like, no, it's a weapon. He was like, you can hurt yourself and other people any moment in time driving this vehicle, which makes sense, right? So that's why I, I learned how to drive. It's education. I took uh, driver ed. Driver, you know, driver's ed. You go through a driver training course before you even take your written. That's why you get a learner's permit, right? That's yeah, why exactly. you get a license, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to register your car, right? You got to insure your car, and so for me. And again, this is me speaking, right? I don't want to speak for any other firearms owners. But uh, for me, like, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with... And, and what does that do? Education. It makes it so that everyone has an idea, and under, uh, at least a basic understanding of how these things work, what the terms are, mm -hmm. you know. And it makes you less afraid. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, Education yeah. reduces fear. Yeah. Um, the more you know about something, the more confident you are, and the less afraid you are. And I think that's one of the big misconceptions of guns, gun ownership, and gun use, not just in America, but across the planet. Um, people that don't know anything about firearms are the ones that fear them the most because they have no idea what these things are about. They don't know how they work. They don't know what a caliber is. They don't know what right. you know action is. Well, it's funny you say that because when you talk about like, they, they, they say, uh, weapons of war, right? That's the, the talking point now, weapons of war. An AR-15, an AR, uh, AR what size round is that? 223-556, okay, usually. Right. All right, so what about a deer hunting rifle? 308, 3030. So it's okay. a significantly larger round that can do significantly it's, more damage. Absolutely, it's more powerful. It's got more powder in it. Um, the projectile, just by definition, um, the bullet itself is uh, larger. Man. Okay. Um, so, like, what that tells me is there's fear. What it tells me is that, oh, these things look too militaristic. Mm -hmm. Well, they're tactical. You know what I mean? And let's not And again, ourselves. what did people expect weapons of the future to look like? They're not going to look like your grandpa's shotgun. Right. Okay. Um, weapons of the future are designed on a scale that keeps on increasing every day, okay? Not just every month, every year, but every day. There's more technology out there, more optics, more different types, um, more controls on any given firearm. More, right, more modifications. And then the other thing... And it's hard to keep up. Right, it is. And not just that, but that's the same across everything. Right? Exactly. So, cars, like cars. That we were talking about before. That's how we ended up with a mid-engine Corvette. Right. Mm -hmm. There's never Airbags. been. Airbags. There's never been one. Right? ABS, Airbags. that kind of thing. Podcasts. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, if we wanted to record something like this ten years ago, we were using a lot larger cameras, a lot of cables. Right. And it'd have to have a studio for right. it. We're doing this right in our store today, which is great. And while we're recording the podcast, you guys can't see it if you're actually watching this on YouTube right now, but. Behind the camera, I actually have a live stream for a behind-the-scenes shot. So right now, everybody on Facebook is watching. So I'm actually going to go back in there now and wave at a few people. Uh, okay, well, I'll give you guys a thumbs up. But yeah, so technology changes, you know. Mm -hmm. And look, 
50 years ago, 60 years ago, right? Maybe if I had a intruder in my home, I'd be pulling out my revolver and a flashlight. What? By doing that, I have two hands that are being used. Oh, wait a second. Someone had a great idea. We can put, put rails on the pistol. You can put your light on the pistol. Now, all of a sudden, home invasion or whatever happens in the middle of the night. Or you have a hand you free have. to keep your family at bay. Bingo. And you can still see, right? So some of these modifications make sense. And in order for it to use these modifications, you know, that's why you get these tactical rails. That's why you get all of these scopes and you know, lasers and, and whatever, but they're all accessories. Like, I, I think that's the big thing, is like, take the AR, and then the next time somebody freaking, pardon my friends, next time someone fucking walks into a, a, a Walmart or a movie theater or a school with a fucking deer hunting rifle, I don't want to hear anyone talking about taking my deer hunting rifle away next. And now let's talk about that. Now the Ruger 1022 is the ultimate 22 caliber hunting rifle for small game, like rabbits, squirrels, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. There is no difference between that and an AR-15. The caliber is 22 or 223, mm -hmm. same size of the bullet, okay? It's just that the casing has more powder charge in it, so it's a more powerful round. But they're both semi-automatic weapons, okay? They both have a 10-round magazine, or at least in New Jersey, you can only have 10 rounds. But initially, the Ruger 10-22 came with a 10-round magazine. Um, they're basically designed the same, they are a rifle. They are a shoulder mount firearm where one trigger pull gives you one shot until your magazine is empty, okay? An AR works no differently than that, but because it's black and we have gun racism in this country as well, a black gun is better than a wood gun, okay? Well, that's really not the case. They're both made pretty much the same. There's very few differences. And education is the key to battle the use of illegal guns and gun violence and mass shootings and not putting restrictions on legal gun owners, law-abiding citizens, because once you take all the guns away from the good guys, all you have left are the bad guys with guns. And, and criminals new, don't abide by the I law. I would say here's a newsflash. Okay. Right? Uh, criminals don't give a shit about the law. Mm -hmm. Let's be real, right? They don't care about the law. So, right. so what are you doing? You're disarming the, the public is what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. You're disarming the public. Um, you already have a militarized police force, right? And that's a whole other conversation. But mm -hmm. you have a militarized police force. You disarm the public. Um, and at the end of the day, you know what? The cops ain't coming to save you. The cops are responding to a call after something has already happened. That's something I don't, you know, I was like, oh, well, the cops Most mass there. shootings occur between 10 and 15 minutes. And the police aren't even called until two minutes into, two minutes into the shooting, mm -hmm. okay? Then it takes them a couple of minutes to respond. So now you've already had five minutes. You know how long five minutes is when you're firing a weapon? Yeah. That's a lot of rounds, yeah. okay? Um, and it's truly obvious that lawmakers don't know how to handle this situation, but it's simple, okay? We must learn how to level the playing field, okay? Firearms education, everyone must learn how to handle and operate a firearm and learn to carry. Stop the restrictions and bans on, and the fear that goes along with ignorance because once the bad guys know everyone else knows about guns, suddenly they're not a threat because, okay, you're coming into my place of business with a gun, guess what? Right. I, I, I have one too. Okay, you know, and, and and I don't mean to interrupt you. I know I've been doing a lot, but like okay. when it Free comes to, but uh, that's the other thing, right? They say the, you know the, the good guy with a gun argument. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be 100% obvious, uh, uh, honest. Uh, a good friend of mine, Levi, uh, I grew up with him in Boston, and he moved out to Utah a long time ago, and I think he still lives there. He might have moved out, but anyways, uh, you know, he posted something on Facebook recently, and basically, what he said echoes my own feelings. Right. I'm in, a, I'm in a public setting, a lot of people around me, right? Mass shooting happens. Like this whole thing in Walmart, right? And the whole thing, you know, it's like a lot of like pro 2A guys are, you know, this is why we need more people carrying guns and whatever, whatever, right? Which makes sense. My whole thing though is this. If there's a mass shooting, chances are I'm not anywhere in the vicinity where I can clearly see the shooter. In most cases, right? You got panic, you got people running all over the fucking yeah. place. And situational awareness is number one. Number two is if I am holding, you know, if I am carrying legally, 
Um, and some shit gets off. You know what? What I'm going to do, personally, me, is turn, make sure that my kids are good, make sure that my family is good, make sure the people I care about are good, mm -hmm. right? And try to get them the fuck out of there. Right. That's my whole thing. If if in the process I see some guy freaking letting off rounds into Wielding the crowd, a, yeah. mm -hmm. and I can get a Take shot off, down, right? then I'll do that. But are you also putting yourself in great risk because the next person that pulls out a gun to take down this person may get shot by oncoming police officers on the scene Believe because me. you have a firearm. They don't necessarily know don't that know you're a sure good is. guy. Yeah. So it's a dangerous situation either way. But being able to defend yourself and your family is a Second Amendment right yeah. and should not be infringed. Yeah. You know, I've got to, I want to get them out of there and get as many people to safety as possible, right? right? You know, like, there's professionals for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anyone's really trying to run around uh, to, to play the hero. I think there's a handful of people no. that will try to. But big box store owners should really put this as a number one agenda. How am I keeping my customers safe? Yeah. How am I taking care of the people that uh, support my livelihood? Do I just let them come into the store, anybody, at any time, without regard to their safety? I don't think so. That's not the reality anymore. The reality is it's dangerous out there, okay? And you have to take care of the people that take care of you, i.e. your customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you go into Home Depot, Walmart, when you go to a concert, when you go to a ball game, you should see some sort of presence there that says, we got you covered, we got your back. Right. Okay? And not just to make you feel safe, but to make the bad guy feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, again, we have to level the playing field. Um, 100%. And so let's turn the tables on violent crime and mass shootings and fear of guns and let's educate ourselves about the problem. So look, we have drug awareness, we have sexual predator awareness, we have uh, awareness about how to teach our children to stay away from strangers, we have uh, awareness on fire safety and on drowning, um, you know, uh, fire safety and drowning, drowning. So let's be lifeguards against gun violence if we can, you know, keep an eye out. To, to what people are doing and where they're at. Mm -hmm. And if something goes down, be that protector, be that lifeguard, be the person that takes control and command of the situation, even if you're not carrying. But it helps. Well, you know, my whole thing is this, right? Is when I think of, like, firearms awareness and firearms education and situational awareness, and then I think about, like, kids in schools, what bothers me the most is twofold. One, hit the, you know, hit the dirt. You know, um, they're selling you know, bullet-resistant and bulletproof backpacks, right? right? Um, clothing articles. And that's not what I want my kids to learn. Right. I want my kids to learn that, you know, obviously, yeah, if that kind of stuff happens, they should know these things, right? They should know, okay, yeah, I need to get myself to safety. But are you teaching these kids the difference between cover and concealment? Right. Are you? Because you know You what? can hide, and bullets will go through a wall, they'll go through a door, they'll go through a desk. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, um, one of my favorite when things... When you conceal. When you cover, when you're undercover, you actually have something that's going to stop that round from penetrating and getting to you. And I think these things should be in place, especially in our schools, for our children, considering the environment we live in today. Right. Um, you're not just going to throw a stapler at the guy at the, at the door with a gun, expect to hit him in the head and get knocked out, and okay, you save the day. It's not really how it works. A, you're freaking the hell out because there's somebody shooting at, at you, okay? Uh, number two, the most places do not have controls in place to thwart that situation. Um, it's, you're on your own. You know, so again, situational awareness is huge because every time you walk into some place, make sure you know how to get out. Right. You know, and, and I think the other thing, too, is when you people talk about, like, situational awareness, there's a term that I learned when I was long, when I was a kid a long time ago, right, which was, you know, you're either book smart or you're street smart, right? Right? Uh, and, and being street smart meant just that. It means paying attention. Knowing where you are. Stay out of the bad neighborhoods. You know, I mean, uh, you know it's, it's everything, dude. Like, for me, coming, you know, being somebody that grew up in the bad neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right? Situational awareness for me meant keep an eye on freaking uh, cops. You know what I mean? Why? Because I've been plenty of cops that have taken my ass and thrown me up against the wall, slammed me on the ground, 
searched me and didn't find anything and said, see you the fuck later, right? right? So situational awareness for me is just that, is who's around me? Are there any threats present? Right. Does anything look out of, out of, out of whack and for that's, me? And that's the key. Does anything look strange? Is, is there something that you're getting a bad gut feeling? And believe me, trust your gut. When it comes to something like this, you walk into a place and you get a bad gut feeling, maybe it's just best to turn around and walk out. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Don't go in there, try to assess the situation and see why maybe am I feeling this way? Is there something wrong here? Mm -hmm. It may be too late. If you get a gut feeling about something like that, maybe there's something is wrong. And is it really uh, so terrible that you don't walk into Walmart that day to get your whatever? Right. You know what I mean? If you're getting a feeling like that. Um, well, the other thing, too, is, is like, for example, uh, Wu-Tang Clan had a, had a huge series of concerts this past summer, you know, 25th anniversary and whatever. And I was fortunate to go to two of the shows. Uh, first show I went to was in Philly. That is a venue, great venue. Um, good amount of people there, but it felt like there were, you know, plenty of exits and the whole nine. I went to a show, I went to their second show in Atlantic City. And while you're actually inside of the venue, you know, there's security everywhere, you're getting wandered down. I felt cool. I felt, okay, you know, it's inside of a casino, and this is, you know, inside of, so the concert's inside of a concert hall, inside of a casino, right? right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. And it wasn't until it was time to leave, when they made everybody go out of one exit, you know, um, and then you have all of these people that were at this show coming out of this one exit, and then they had the escalators um, trying to funnel everybody down. And for about five minutes, I'm standing smack dab in the middle of, I don't know, a thousand people. Mm -hmm. I have nowhere to go, yeah. right? And, I'm, and, and you want to talk about, like, targets? Yeah. I felt like a sitting duck, mm -hmm. right? I was, you know, fortunately nothing happened, right? right? But for me, the first thing I'm thinking about is, I'm, you know, I'm looking around and I'm like, fuck, okay. That door opens outwards. There's about a thousand people. Here, which means that the chance of that door opening ain't gonna fucking work. Right. And I realized that if anything was to happen, my ass has to fight my way through, through. to get back into that ballroom right. so that I can go Take and cover. cut through and get and out get on out. another side, right. Right? right? How many people sat there thinking about that? You don't know. Maybe four or five, in my opinion, right? And that's it's a, that's a good point because now in a situation like that, somebody starts firing, <clears throat> they say run. I say don't run. Get low, make yourself as small a target as possible, and move. Because a small moving target is a lot harder to hit than somebody standing up and flailing their arms and trying to, you know, find an exit that 500 other people are trying to get themselves crammed through. And what do you learn in the Army? Okay, they start shooting, you get low. Okay, you get low and you keep moving. And I don't think that's really become... Uh, a an awareness for people if they're in an active shooter situation. You know, I, I saw something on the news the other night, and the guy was very educated. I'm not knocking his his uh, his plan, but he was like, you know, run for cover, run away from the noise, run away from other people that are running in that direction so the crowd is dispersed. But my point is, you're still a huge target, okay? If you're six foot tall, that's a six foot target. You get low, you roll, you crawl, you do whatever you have to, but a small moving target is a lot harder to hit than somebody with 20 people standing up and just spraying fire all over the place. He's going to hit a lot of them, but, you know, the ones that are down on the ground <coughs> and low and moving. Now, I know in the Walmart shooting, <coughs> excuse me, there was people that were taking cover and they were low on the ground. But they were hiding under tables and they were stationary. And, and unfortunately, a lot of them didn't make it. Um, and the reality of that is they were doing the right thing. Right. They were getting themselves out of the line of fire. They were making themselves a smaller target. They were getting under cover um, or under concealment um, to the best that they could. But again, with a situation like an active shooter situation, there is no rule book. No. There is no, oh, this is how you get out of it. Mm -hmm. No, there is no, this is how you get out of it. The way you get out of it is to educate yourselves on firearms, educate yourselves on what 
mental health issues go along with the thoughts of an active shooter and get yourself involved in training and actually being situationally aware of what you need to do if you're stuck inside a building with a whole bunch of other people and one guy walks in deciding he wants to get mad at the world. You know what I mean? Well, you know, what I think is funny, too, about situational awareness is I find that more, and, and, and I, gotta, I wanna be careful with how I say this, because I don't wanna offend anyone, but, uh, you know, I'm an Uber driver from time, you know, a part-time Uber driver, right? And ever since uh, news has come out of, you know, women who have had bad Uber experiences or drives or weird stuff, right? All of a sudden now, they're, everyone out there is kind of situationally aware, at least when it comes to an Uber ride. Mm -hmm. You know, when I pull up, right, I have a sign that's lit up, they come up to me, and I ask, and I say their name and see if they have it correct, right? And they say the same thing, you know, they, 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 they'll say my name or they'll ask me for my name. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll make sure that my license plate is the correct one, right. that my car is the, is, is right. the right one, right? right? Why is it an article can come out mm -hmm. about a bad situation and next thing you know, it's all over the freaking news to the point where people are practicing this. You know, where they're saying, like, I read another one where a woman said, you know, every time she steps into the backseat of an Uber, the first thing that she does is try to open the door again. Uh -huh. Right? Because if the child locks in gate, she can't get out of the car. Right. She's situationally aware. Right? right? Why is Excellent. it when it comes to a mass shooting, all of a sudden, there was like, oh, we need to take guns away. Right. What do you want? So, a couple of people have bad Uber experiences, you're going to take fucking Uber away? Mm -hmm. Really? Right. And it's funny you say that because... On the beach this month, or past month, they had a problem with a child getting impaled by an umbrella. There was a strong wind, the umbrella came free from the sand, and then impaled the child. So now they want to put all these safety devices on the umbrella. No. You have to be situationally aware. If it's a windy day and you're using an umbrella, guess what? You, gotta un you can't use the umbrella or you got to dig it in really hard. You can't be stupid about these things. You can't just automatically assume that everything is safe, right. okay? Because right. it's not. Okay. Even an um be beach umbrella, mm -hmm. you know? If you go on the beach and it's a windy day and you have your umbrella up, guess what? It wants to fly, you know? And if you're not aware of that, situationally aware um, of your beach umbrella, I mean, come on. Right. I think Same the American regards. public and I think a lot of people are just so complacent that everything's going to work as advertised. You know, and advertisements are lies, okay? They're trying to sell you a product. They're not going to tell you the truth. Well, this really doesn't work, but I want you to buy it anyway. No, that's not that they're going to sell it to you. It's the best product on the market for the best price, and you can have it at your door through Amazon in 24 hours, and you'll be so happy that you're going to tell your neighbors about it. You know what? That's not reality. That's commercials, okay? And commercials are, uh, they're lies, basically. They, they tell you something you want to hear because you want that product. It's not really how it is. It's not reality. And the problem is, it would be nice if there were no guns on the planet, but that's not reality. Right. So we have to get with reality and say, okay, there's 875 million guns on the planet, and 43% of those guns are in the United States alone, okay? That's... Uh, that's a lot of guns, okay? It's, it's more, more guns, guns, than, guns people. than people. Yep. Yeah. So um, you need to educate yourself. And I don't mean this in a threatening way. I mean this honestly and to take it to heart because if there's something you don't know about, you don't understand it, okay? And then there's fear and there's questions and there's why do we have to have this in the first place? Mm -hmm. I saw a video last night on the woman who, why do we have to have ARs? Well, ARs are no different than your granddad's Ruger mm -hmm. 1022, and they're really no different than a bolt action. It's just that, you know, you have to move a bolt on a bolt action. Um, the fact is, guns are a part of our history, okay? They're a part of our freedom. They're what kept us free. Since the beginning of the nation, firearms have been with us, whether it be for hunting or for food, defend our freedom or our families. And today, more than ever, the need for firearms education is paramount. Yeah. So, and that's the key, is we're not saying that everybody needs to own a firearm. You know, um, 
Right, but to know a little bit about it is a really good help. One scenario I like to tell Jose is when I train some of my students is, okay, so you're in your home. It's late at night. You hear somebody fumbling at the door, okay? Now, criminals aren't the smartest people in the world. So they finally get the door open, but he trips over Junior's fire truck, who left it right in the doorway, and he loses his gun and falls at your feet because you're inquiring what, what the ruckus is. What do you do with the firearm? Do you know what to do? do you, can you tell whether it's loaded or unloaded? Can you tell whether it's a revolver or a pistol? Can you tell whether it's semi-automatic, single action, double action? These are some of the things that you need to educate yourself on because I'm not going to say if you're ever in a situation with 875 million guns in the world, by the time you're six feet under, you probably will be in a situation like that just because of the sheer volume of firearms on the planet. You really need to take the time, not just for yourself, but for your family, for your friends, and even perfect strangers, okay? Again, the protector program, this goes back to being a protector. You need to educate yourself on different types of firearms, different action types, how they work, what the exactly. caliber is, and how to avert, how to put off an attack. And see, and one of the other things too, right, is, is I know we're talking a lot about like, uh, like mass, mass shootings, right? Mm -hmm. But beyond that, just when it comes to education, I don't want my kids to go over to one of their friend's house and their friends say, oh, check this out or look at this, right? Mm -hmm. And my kids not know what to do, mm -hmm. right? Like, if they say, oh, my dad has a gun, I want my kids to be like, that's cool, leave that shit over there, mm -hmm. right? Or, let's say little Billy walks out and goes to my son or my daughter and says, hey, check this out, the moment my kid sees that firearm, I want my kid to realize what it is, I want them to see if that finger is on that trigger, I want them to try to keep it away from anybody, move it out of the way, right? I want my kid to be able to take that firearm and, and disarm it. You want him to be able to recite the three rules of gun safety, okay? Always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Yep. Always keep your finger off the trigger. Always keep it unloaded until you're ready to use right. it. And the three key words there are always. Bingo. You're not some of the time, not half of the time, All always. The time. You always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Even if you don't do the other two things, no one will get hurt. Right. You always keep your finger off the trigger. Even if it's pointed in an unsafe direction, chances are no one will get hurt. If it is unloaded and you're sure you know how to unload a firearm, different kinds of firearms right. unload different ways. Mm -hmm. So, again, three rules really need to be taught to our very young children at a young age so they can recite it like their ABCs. Right. And so if the situation came down the yeah. pike like that for our young children, they're like, no. Right. Just it's not something, no. right, it's not going to be something that is taboo that they're interested in, right, because they're exposed to it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be something that, oh man, this is so cool, because again, they've grown up with these firearms, right? Mm -hmm. They've learned about them. Uh, but more importantly, you know what I mean? If there's a, you know, a, a firearm on the ground or whatever, you know, my kids should be able to take it, clear it, mm -hmm. eject the magazine, you know, put the safety on, make sure that everything is cool It's not going to hurt anybody. Bingo. They're, they're assuming the protector role because right. they're responsible, they're educated. And you know what? The ramifications are so outstanding, they're so great, they're so uh, horrific. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, taking someone's life unintentionally, probably the worst thing a person can go through, especially if that other person is a family member, member a brother or a sister, a close friend, right. okay? Right. Um, not something you're gonna get over real quick. No. Uh, I met a guy that came into the store, he was actually a salesman for cable. And he said, oh, very interesting setup you have here. He goes, well, what's it all about? I says, it's about firearms education. I says, do you have a firearm? He goes, no, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like firearms. I says, well, why is that? He goes, my brother shot his friend when they were kids mm -hmm. because they were messing around with a firearm and it killed him. 
And now this guy didn't do it. His brother did. His younger brother. They were fooling around with a firearm. It was his dad's. They found it. The kid just for fun stuck it in the kid's gut and pulled the trigger. And guess what? It was loaded. Okay? He didn't make it. Uh, this guy's brother still to this day, this is 30 years later, has serious, I don't want to say mental issues, serious issues, okay? Um, because three rules were thrown out the window, no, thrown out the window not, not taken seriously. So one of the things that we try to teach here is, again, always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction, no matter what you're doing, even if you're just showing somebody it, okay? And assume that it's always loaded, all right? Always. And then the other thing is, Keeping your finger off the trigger. That's very difficult for some people to do when they pick up a firearm because of Hollywood. Hollywood, you see people grab it by the trigger. They always have their finger on the trigger. Why? Because it's a fake gun, all right? It's a movie prop. Um, and always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. Most households that do have firearms for home security and home safety have their guns in a secure location and they are loaded. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, because in the middle of the night, you don't want to be fumbling for the magazine and then making the noise for putting the round in the chamber and then tipping regardless, off your location to regardless what to kind of firearm you. you have. You yeah. know what I mean? My whole thing is somebody wants to kick in my front door, for mm -hmm. example, right? You know, home invasion or whatever. I want to be able to go to the nightstand, put my hand on the biometric safe, have it pop, pop out up. my, you know, biometric fingerprint, right. you know, my fingerprint. Ain't nobody getting into that safe. Mm -hmm. Me, you know, maybe one other person, right? But, you know, I want to be able to just put my hand there, grab my, my pistol, grab my magazine, I'm good to go, right. whatever is going on out there, right? Or I want to be able to pull out, you know, a, a, a KSG or, or whatever it is so I can figure out what the hell is going on. The last thing you want to do is say, oh, well, my pistol is in the nightstand, my magazines are in the closet, but my rounds are actually in the basement. Mm -hmm. That's not doing anything good for you, right? So, so common sense is the least common of all senses. It is. It is. You know? It is. Um, I don't, you know, like, my brother Danny, perfect example. When I visited my brother Danny in North Carolina, um, I walk in, and he was like, oh, I just picked up the new FN 5.7. I was like, fantastic. I want to go check this thing out, right? So we go down to his gun safe, right? He's the one with the combination. None of us have the combination. He opens up the safe. Pulls him out, and before he even handed anything, double checked to make sure everything was clear. And I said, well, where's your home defense piece? He's like, he's like, well, that's my concealed carry, and I keep that on me pretty much all day long, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we had just gotten, you know, gotten there and whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, if he's not concealed carrying, then, you know, he has his sport firearms in the safe, but he has a safe next to his nightstand right. where he keeps his Smith & Wesson M&P, mm -hmm. you know, and a couple of magazines mm -hmm. for that reason. He has three kids. None of these kids um, touch firearms. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he's, he's told them, obviously, but, that, yeah. okay, this is daddy's gun. You don't touch Bingo. it. Right. And if you have any questions about it, daddy will show you how it works and how to use it. Bingo. So there isn't that, you know, kids are so curious. And I think that's what gets parents in trouble because they forget how to be a kid. They forget they were a kid. Mm -hmm. And what did you do when you were a kid? You found your dad's fucking Playboy magazines. You found your mom's whatever underwear. You found your 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 grandpa's rifle right. in the basement. You know, and you're curious about this stuff because it's something you've never seen before. You don't know about it, right. and it's right. a curiosity. Mm -hmm. So you can't fault the kids for it. The parents have to be on the ball. And as far as parents go, and having small children in a house with a firearm, it's best if you be completely honest with them. I was always honest with my children growing up. I did not keep firearms in my house for that very reason. Uh, my one son, Joshua, is handicapped. He has Down syndrome. I don't think he would understand even if I showed him what and how. Um, so firearms were not allowed in the house when my children were being raised. Um, I was still shooting. I still had, you know, access at the range that I went to. Um, and, and even at that, the 
curiosity for them was there, you know, because they see all these diehard movies and Rambo and everybody's like, right, and the Call of you know, movies and the Halos. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and then the video games were coming out at that point, too. And, and it was just, for me, it was intriguing because of the realism, you know. I had never seen graphics like in when Call of Duty, for example. Call of Duty, there you go. Yeah. Um, but the key is for parents of young children to make them aware, teach them the three rules of gun safety, teach them that firearms that are not theirs do not get touched. And they won't have firearms until they're at least 18 years old. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the big thing, right? And I think that's kind of what we're trying to, I know we talk about a lot here, but that's what we're trying to do here, mm -hmm. right? Is ed just educate people, you know? Um, know about situational awareness. Know how to properly handle a firearm. Mm -hmm. You know, know the differences between different rounds. You know, make educated decisions. If you decide you want to own a firearm, okay. Get training. Get training. Mm -hmm. On that. And it's, not, and it's not a, training is not such a big deal. It's not like you're going into a combat situation right. when you train. I train people in the classroom all the time. I believe that they come away with a lot more knowledge and understanding and less fear than when they first walk through right. the door. Um, the, the point being is you have to be serious about it. Like if you're playing a game of tennis or basketball or any kind of sport, there are shooting sports that does take training. Okay, it's not something that is you know you're born with. You pull a trigger, okay, and it's not just about trigger pull. And I would, uh, you know, um, ask everybody to get training and just on basic knowledge. Like you know, a lot of people don't know the difference between a magazine and a clip, and they constantly you know, and a semi-automatic and a full automatic. And or a round sing, cartridge and bullet. Yeah, a, a single action or a double action. These things that should be common knowledge because it's such an important topic and it needs to be uh, used to deter gun violence, violent crime, mass shootings. And again, leveling the playing field um, so the criminals don't still have the upper hand. I mean, I'd like to say that we've come a long way since like the days of Prohibition and the Tommy gun and, you know, Bonnie and Clyde and stuff like that, but we really haven't. We haven't made a national effort to instill the importance of firearms training and handling. The fundamentals, mm -hmm. that's the knowledge and the skills and the attitude to be able to handle a firearm. And I think attitude is the most important thing because if you're careless and reckless with a firearm, it doesn't matter how much training you have or how much skill level, you're, you know, your skill level is if you're a marksman or a sharpshooter. If you're careless with a firearm, accidents are going to happen. Oh, and the only way that we can avoid that is with training. And it doesn't take a lot of time. Some of my students' classes are only an hour long. And they learn an awful lot. I'm not saying it's the ultimate training course no. by any means, no. but it does give them the ability to build on a foundational knowledge. Right. You know, um, and that's the whole thing. You know, I know some of our followers on uh, on Instagram, for example, uh, do a lot of tactical training. You know, um, and I think that that's a great kind of uh, like graduated step from what we do here, right? Because mm -hmm. here it's about Basic. educating, foundation, basics. Mm -hmm you know, um, practice, right? And then you can go from here, you can go into a, a, a fire range situation and feel more comfortable, especially if you've never been to a range. I remember the first time I went to the range, I thought it was cool as hell, um, and I was nervous, I didn't, because I never had fired a handgun before, right? So I was nervous, I didn't want to make any mistakes. And, you know, I've had, uh, you know, I remember the guy behind the range giving me a quick little lesson. Fortunately, I was with my brother who had been shooting for years, you know, so he brought me in into that situation. But, you know, I mean, how many times, I mean, I even saw it when I was there, you know. Where, People don't have good muzzle control. So the key is when you go on the range, you have to learn to shoot before you go to shoot. Okay, so don't learn on a live range right. because there's other people that do know the safe fundamentals of firearm handling and they will pick you out like a green tomato man oh, okay yeah, yeah, um, they will know that you do not know how to handle a firearm and it scares us I get scared every time I go to the public range because there's guys training people for the first time uh, true scenario 
I was at the range one day, the guy next to me, big tall instructor, was teaching this young little girl how to shoot. She had good form, but again, kind of clueless on muzzle control, keeping your finger off the trigger. Uh, muzzle control, I mean, is keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction. She turned right around to him with the gun pointed under his chin and said, is that how you want me to do it? Okay, fully loaded firearm, finger on the trigger, the gun pointed right under his chin. Because she was like a small stature, and this guy was like six foot four at least. And he just professionally took the gun away from pointing at his face and pointed it downrange and explained to her, okay, this is something you have to really be aware of. The gun needs to be pointed in a safe direction, and your finger needs to be off the trigger at all times unless you're firing the weapon. Uh, you, you really need to pay attention to that. And it, it scared him. I was back out of the shooting booth because the, the carriage moves the targets back and forth was stuck, the people next to me. And it was a, a young couple. You know, they were dressed to the nines. The guy on his penny loafers and no socks, and she was wearing this leather pants and a low-cut blouse. And I know that they had no idea what they were doing. So now I'm, I'm in between two shooters that really have no idea. So I cut my shooting time short that day. Um, I think I only had 50 rounds into it when they both were on either side of me and I, I emptied my mag, got my stuff put away and left uh, because I was afraid. I was in fear of my life because someone would make a, a mistake that they weren't aware of. Right. They weren't even aware that they were doing this because they didn't have the training. So learn to shoot before you shoot, okay? Don't learn to shoot while you're shooting because you don't yet have the knowledge and the skills and the attitude that it takes to handle a firearm in any situation. And it has to be any situation. Don't feel like, oh, I, I'm okay to go to the range. Okay, well, what about a home invasion situation? What about a situation where you're hunting? What about a situation where whatever, make a, you know, make a scenario. But these are some of the fundamentals here at First Level Training that we really try to instill in people. And we're trying to get the word out there. And uh, I do want to do some shout-outs while we're, you're talking about people yeah, yeah. on Instagram. All the Instagram followers, thank you so much. You guys are great. Yeah. Uh, we share a lot of content between us, and I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate what you guys put out there. Um, Absolutely. You know, when I first got into the whole social media thing, I was a big Hickok 45 fan. That was. I still am. I love him, and I love John. Um, they do a great job. And uh, a whole bunch of other people out there. Um, I really can't name them all, but I know Iraq. Uh, veteran 8888, yep. um, Eric and Chad, and um, Such, uh, double zero, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Paul Harrell, another, I support him on Patreon because I think his content is excellent. Yep. Um, and I also support on Patreon Iraq Veteran 8888 um, because of their their professional way they, they uh, have their, uh, their content and their YouTube videos set up. I think they do a really, really good job, and I want to support them. And I ask you guys to support us. If you're ever in the uh, situation where you can uh, support us on Patreon or, you know, sub subscribe to us on YouTube yeah. and Instagram, uh, yeah. you know, give us uh, so, yeah, so, likes or loves or whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, as far as Instagram, the Instagram account is uh, at FLT underscore NJ, First Level Training, New Jersey. Um, Facebook, just look us up, First Level Training. We'll make sure, and I always keep uh, com the links in the comments below as well. Right. So you'll be good there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of love from some other YouTubers, which was uh, which was unexpected, but mm -hmm. we really appreciate that. Um, I think uh, what was uh, Guns R Us, uh, Clip Component Ammo was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just a, a ton, a ton of people that have really been showing us a lot of. Uh, likes and love uh, mm -hmm. so you know definitely check out their channels as well but uh, yeah visit some, hit us up on Instagram um, the number is 609-488-1085 so you know pick up the phone give us a phone call you know we won't scream your head off you know we'll uh, actually talk to you which is nice and you can always email me it's glenn at the firearms education center dot com I'll always get your emails there. You can also hit us up with Facebook Messenger, Instagram yeah. Messenger, you mm -hmm. name it. Um, yeah, we're totally now into the social media thing. We have to, as being a small business in New Jersey, um, it's a state where they're really putting a chokehold on um, gun owners 
uh, law-abiding citizens, and we're trying to change that. We're trying to change it from the ground up. Once people get the idea that guns are something that is a part of society, like driving your car, you get you know driver education uh, courses and safety, that we can take it to the top, and we're not going to be getting crazy laws like you know. Um, Red flag, red flag laws, laws. And, and stuff like that that don't make any sense. And they don't do any good either because criminals do not abide by the law. So we have to get our congressmen and senators and our government in the mindset that criminals do not abide by the law. Yeah. Let's do something that it takes the guns out of their hands. And I think one of the biggest things is education. I would like to see some of our elected officials, uh, Feinstein and Biden and uh, Booker and, you know, and that's just in New Jersey, well, some of them in New Jersey, um, have them take this course so they actually know what yeah. they're talking about. Uh, you know, when I hear things like, um, you know, magazine bans and assault weapon bans, I, I, I do believe it's ignorance that's talking. And again, like commercials, they want to sell you everything and tell you it's the best product. This is all they're doing. It's lip service. They're giving us a line of crap so, just to get votes for their next election. So if I, let me ask you a question. If I take this pen and I throw it at you, it becomes an assault pen. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, you know, I mean, one of the things for me, too, is a uh, segue, right? No. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the things for me is, you know, uh, I'm originally, originally from Massachusetts, right? And so they have some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a lot of friends and family there. Uh, my brother lives in North Carolina. I live in New Jersey, right? Uh, I have another brother who lives in Florida, right? Um, and I do a lot of traveling. I go up and down, visit my family, right? Like most people do, right? Um, but when every single state that you're going to travel through has a different law with regards to the firearms, even if I am following the letter of the law in, let's say, New Jersey, and let's say on my way down, I drive into Delaware, and their laws are different, you know, and I get Delaware, pulled Maryland, over. Maryland, yeah, yeah. Right? Because some states say that it needs to be in a locked case in your trunk, for example. Right. Some of them say it needs to be on your seat, you know what I mean, a lock, you know, or whatever it is. Or locked in your trunk, ammo away from, ammo has to be locked separately from your firearm. Right. Um, and these reciprocity laws, is what they're called, are not consistent throughout no. the country. And no. this is something that would really level the playing field as far as concealed carry responsible right. gun owners are concerned. Um, I mean, the laws need to be consistent. Yeah, right? consistency. So That's consistency it. is what we're looking for. Yeah, and not I mean, to have, oh, okay, well, because like where I live, uh, you can't have a gun. 50 miles away, you can. Uh, 20 miles down further down than that, you can't. And then if you go into New York, well, if you have one, you're going to prison, okay? Right, so this, right. and it's, it's confusing as hell. It's not, you know, leveled across the playing field. There is, is no con uh, continuity. And it, you know and it makes it very difficult for the legal gun owner to stay out of jail. Um, so because reading all these laws, again, makes they're exactly. made by people that really have very little knowledge in firearms. So, I mean, I look at it like this, dude. Like, I personally, again, because I can only speak for myself, right? I can't speak for everybody. But myself, personally, right, I feel that, like, I'm perfectly okay with a 10-round capacity magazine if it's, if it's across the board. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it is. If you want to own a firearm, and it has to be a 10-round magazine, and we're going to make that consistent across all 50 states and territories and what have you, fine. I'm okay with that. Would I prefer a uh, you know, 15-round magazine? Sure. I'll take a 10, though, because I know I can keep extra magazines with me. Right. And I also have, you know, in the back of my mind, I also think about, well, I can put, I can put 10 rounds through my firearm. Um, what happens if I take a, a drum magazine that has 50 rounds or, or 100 rounds and I try to put it through there? The likelihood of something jamming mm -hmm. after a certain, you know, set amount of time or a certain amount of rounds put through is, 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 is going to increase exponentially, right? right? And it's just, it's just math. So by, yeah, so by doing a uh, magazine ban, 10 rounds, they've actually made the active shooter more efficient. Right. Okay? So between that and um, gun-free zones, so you're telling a more efficient shooter now where to keep, kill people. Mm -hmm. 
And these are some of the laws that have been made by our legislators because they don't know any better. It's not their fault, but they're helping the criminal. They're helping the, the mentally unstable person because they're making laws that actually make their assault more efficient, which is yeah. absolutely nuts. Right. Uh, I, I can't stress enough the word education. Yeah. I really can't. I'll put it, here's another way to put it. These active shooters, and you, you taught me this term, you know, they go after soft targets. They're going after crowds of people. Right? These are guys that aren't gangster, for the lack of a better term. Right? These aren't guys that are fucking heroes. They don't, guys, they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. They don't want to fight. Yeah, no. don't want you don't see feedback. them. Listen, listen. You don't see them kicking down the door to the local police station. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't see them trying to attack the local army barracks. Right. You don't see them going after local the police hunting, academy. Hunting club. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't see them kicking the door down of the shooting range. Right. You see them going after schools. Helpless. Nightclubs. Defenseless. You know what I mean? People. You know, like, what is it? You know. We should be able to, you know, it, it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Mm -hmm. That means I should be able to go to school without worrying that I'm going to die. Right. And watch kids. Right. I should be able to go do my grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. I should be able to go to the park, go enjoy a festival, mm -hmm. go to a nightclub, go to a concert. I should be able to go to these places and not be afraid that something might happen, right? Um, but that's not the world we live in. It's not. It's not. So, and this is why... Nightclub owners, uh, concert goers, uh, people that simply shop at Home Depot or Walmart really need to be situationally aware, yeah. which I think this is mainly what our video content today is about. Mm -hmm. Situational awareness, not just being aware of firearms and how to educate yourself, but where firearms could present themselves uh, yeah. anywhere, your home, yeah. your church, your school, Walmart. I mean... Just be aware, you know, um, and you were, you were talking about growing up in Massachusetts. If you guys are interested in more um, Second Amendment rights stuff, um, Nikki Liberty Doll uh, has a great YouTube channel. She's got such excellent content. Um, she's very well spoken. She's very well researched. Um, another person you should check out on YouTube. If you want to get some real um, factual information, not just stuff that you're not going to hear on, you know, MSN and CBS and NBC Fox, or yeah. the newspaper or, or even on your tab. Um, it's not going to happen these days. We have very few people like her that is giving you the real deal about what's going on. And uh, thumbs up to her because she's she does her homework and yep. she has really good content. And there's a couple other channels out there, too, that are supporting your Second Amendment rights. And, you know, the First, Second, and Third Amendment, I think uh, Eric at Iraq Veteran 8888 put it very well. It's like going food shopping. What do you put first on the list? Milk, eggs, and bread. Because right. that's what you make everything else. So the First, Second, and Third Amendments are the ones that they put first because they are the most important. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, and um, Just pay attention. That's the other thing, too, is, right. is I feel that... You know, I have a lot of friends, you know, I've lived in a lot of places, uh, friends all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my friends are Republican, some of my friends are Democrats, some of my friends are independents, some of them are progressives, right? Um, and, and I think that's kind of what makes the U.S. unique, right? Is yeah. that we have so many people um, that uh, have so many different ex life experiences right. or leanings or affiliations, right? And then because we're around these people, we get to learn. Um, this isn't about politics. This no. isn't about right or left. This isn't about anything other than awareness, mm -hmm. education, you know. And, but. and I don't have any aversion to anti-gunners. I think their stance is righteous. Mm -hmm. They believe that they're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, but in do so doing, get an education yeah. so you know what you're against, okay? Mm -hmm. Even if you don't like something, you still need to learn about it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, my mom's in her 60s. Uh, she has never owned a firearm, okay? Um, and she, have, she was living with my brother in Florida at the time. 
Uh, and my brother has firearms. He has his AR, he has his uh, .30-06, I think he said. He has his 5.7, his MMPs. He likes his firearms. He likes his guns, right? Uh, and my mom was terrified. My brother sat my mother down and said, okay, mom, pulled his mat out. Said, mom, I'm going to show you how to clean this thing, okay? Make sure it looks clear, what have you, bam. And he sat down and showed my mom all the pieces on the table. So it's a puzzle. Now it makes now sense. Now it makes sense, right? So now my mom, for the first time in her life, learned what the different pieces are and realized that, you know what, like, it's just a machine. Bingo. It's just a machine. And mm -hmm. if you learn how to use a machine correctly, it works for you. If you don't know how to use a machine, it is extremely dangerous, a and car knows. being one of them. Even something as simple as your circular saw at home or your chainsaw. If you don't know how to use it, stay away from it. Yeah. But learn yeah. how to use it because it's a tool. It's a part of your, you know, your gig bag, if you will, of and, life. And the Things thing, that you will carry with you for life to help you get through life. And the other thing, too, I want to kind of point out is that you can be as aware and as safe and as thoughtful and mindful as you want to be. Mm -hmm. Accidents still happen, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, I've worked at collision, you know, collision shops. I've worked at car dealerships um, with professionals with a series of certifications who have injured themselves on the job. You know, uh, it just goes to show, like, it doesn't matter how professional you are. It doesn't matter how educated you are. It doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters because accidents happen, right? And so the only thing we can do is make it a habit to train, cross our T's and dot our I's, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Just get that little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. that you need to keep yourself from being a victim, okay? Um, and, and victims have rights as well. Just because you're at the wrong place at the wrong time doesn't mean, oh, well, you didn't know what you were doing, you weren't situationally aware. Um, well, no, I think that's not the case. Um, my point being that, again, what Jose said, accidents happen. People are going to do things that are stupid, and it's going to hurt people. Mm -hmm. But the more we know and the more we learn, the more we can keep those from happening on the humongous scale that they are happening today. Exactly. So um, I just wanted to say thank you, everybody out there, for checking us out. Thanks, Jose, for uh, joining me today. And uh, keep us on your on your feed there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. First yep. level training, the Firearms Education Center. Yep. Give be us smart, a like. Be educated and be safe. Thanks.